Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. So happy to have you here as we round out August, enjoying some of what the summer blooms have to offer in terms of echo prints. Check this out. Last week, I made that shirt and it is on a wool t-shirt that I am wearing from a company called Wool Ant. Today, I would like to switch it up a little bit because every week that I wear this shirt, I'm gonna change it. This week on Color Quest, I'd like to look at Dyer's Chamomile as well as Black Hollyhock. Although I've never worked with Dyer's Chamomile here on Color Quest, I did a couple weeks ago work with Black Hollyhock dyeing a wool skein of yarn. Thanks to the Color Farm, their featured flowers in the month of July were Dyer's Chamomile and Black Hollyhock, both of which they grow there. So let's go back into that CSA box and see what kinds of natural color we can add to this wool shirt this week on Color Quest. All right, if you have missed it, I am actually doing a 21 day challenge with a shirt from Wool and This is not a promotion for this, it's just something I thought that would be fun to do on my own. So I purchased a shirt once I learned that they had this challenge and I saw that the t-shirt that they had available for this 21 day challenge was in fact a lighter color. So I bought one and I am now in about day 10 of wearing it. You have to wear it every day for a minimum of eight hours. And they are trying to show you that with something like wool, it's actually incredibly versatile. It allows for moisture to be whisked away and it doesn't typically smell if you wear it often. So I have been doing just that. Now, last week I took that shirt and I did an echo print with some flowers from my own garden that are good for echo printing. And now I'm going to do something different. But before I do anything, as you know, I'm going to have to wash this. Now, every night I take it off and I hang it in a nice airy place to just stay fresh. And in order to clean it, it's not recommended to do that very often in order to preserve the wool. Per wool and they recommend that you can simply use your washing machine on the cold or gentle cycle. And preferably, I think some pH neutral soap, but there is not one particular brand that is recommended. They do have all of the instructions on their website. If you do choose to buy something from them, they're very good about providing that. However, as you might imagine, hand washing is an option. So I'm in fact going to hand wash. And that is because it's super easy. Because of the echo print, I wanna be a little bit more gentle with it. I do know that over time it's gonna fade anyway, but that's okay. So let me plop it into some cold water with a little bit of pH neutral soap. That's what I'm going to use. And just gently swish it around to get it clean and fresh. I will rinse it and show you what they recommend in terms of how to pat dry it. It's a little bit different. You don't wanna wring out things like wool or silk, protein fibers, they don't like that. So let's get this shirt into some cold soapy water and get it ready to be dyed again. Here's a quick look at what the print looks like. I would say it may have faded slightly, but in a really beautiful way and still super vivid. And I'm wearing this every single day. So let's get that into the water and I am gonna be gentle with it. I would like to try to maintain this the best that I can. And since I pre-treated this with an a la mordant, it should stick around.
So the Coreopsis ran a little bit here. You can see when I washed it and here, not too much. And everything else looks pretty good. It would also go through to the back side. So Coreopsis is really powerful. So I have that little piece from last week that I accidentally hammered through and now I have these two little pieces here. Again, I'm not too worried about it. It was fun to wear it and I'm going to be dying now anyway. Although I wasn't intending on covering this up, I may change my mind. We'll see. Let's roll it up in this towel. This is what they recommend you do to dry it is actually to roll it into a towel like this and then kind of gently squeeze the towel in order to get the excess water out and then I will hang it. The shirt is now dried. I actually could have worked straight into the dye because we're going to want to have wet fiber to introduce the dye anyway but oh well. I let it dry. It looks pretty good. It's clean. And the Echo Print now has a little bit more of a faded look. So now it's time to make our two dies. Inspired by the CSA box from the Color Farm, I collected some Dyer's Chamomile from the farm and I happen to also have some hollyhock. I used all the other black hollyhock from the farm when I dyed the wool skein, but I also have some sitting in my dye inventory. So let's pop over to the color farm where I'll show you the dyer's chamomile. We'll come back over here and we'll start making our dyes. So here are the dyer's chamomile and they still have a few blooms left. I'm going to be taking some of those with the petals, but I'm also going to be taking some that are in this state, which is the final state that they move to. These beautiful yellow globes on top. So here's what I collected from the Color Farm. I had the more round globes as well as the whole flowers here. I'm going to go ahead and use all of these. There are a lot more chamomiles out there. You obviously know of tea and all kinds of other medicinal purposes that chamomile is used for. I had purchased this dried chamomile, which is this variety, different from the Dyer's chamomile, and had worked on a project for another group, and guess what? These worked beautifully. You can see the same round globes and I made an echo print with this and it really worked well. So if you don't have access to Dyer's Chamomile, you can at least use this particular variety as it holds color as well. So let me show you what I made. I did a very simple echo print and that was using just this dried and look at how vibrant this is. I treated this cotton baby bodysuit with aluminum acetate and then I just did a quick steam and I just sort of scattered these and look at how vibrant they turned out. It was such a fun and easy project. So you can see again that this is just this variety as opposed to the Dyer's Chamomile. So I'm going to make a pot of this though, the Dyer's Chamomile. If I need a little bit more volume, I may add some of these, but this may be enough to do what I want to do with the shirt. So this was the wool skein that was made from the Dyer's Chamomile at the Color Farm. And this was the wool skein that I dyed for the Black Hollyhock that was included in this box. It turned out this really beautiful greenish color it has a sort of blue tint to it, but super pretty. Now, I used all those Black Hollyhock, but I did have some botanical color Black Hollyhock that I had purchased a while back. I have a nice volume of that. So I'm also going to make a pot of that. I'm planning on using both of these dyes to add a little bit of color to the base of the wool shirt that I have in sort of an ombre style. I'm going to see what over dyeing these two looks like because I think that might create a really beautiful middle color and whether or not the wool of the shirt will be different than the wool of the yarn. 
don't know. We did get different colors for the cotton that we did in silk, so maybe that'll show up on the wool shirt. I don't know, but let's start making the dye. So I am limited by the number of flowers I have for the Dyer's Chamomile, so I'm not going to be as concerned about doing a particular ratio to the weight of fiber. I'm only going to be dyeing about a quarter of the shirt. The shirt weighed six ounces as a whole, and so maybe I would be dyeing the equivalent of about one or two ounces max. If that were the case, I would need about one or two ounces of chamomile in order to have a one-to-one. -one. I will check that ratio when I weigh the hollyhock, since I have a little bit more of that, although it's very light and quite potent. So I will probably use a similar amount of flowers as I'm only going to be also dyeing just part of the shirt. Let's get those two dyes on the stovetop. And while that's happening, I will also reintroduce the bottom half of the shirt into water to start soaking so that it is wet when it is introduced into the dyes. So the shirt is wet and ready to go in, but I am going to only be dyeing part of this. I want to leave this bottom section without any dye on it because when I over dye I want to have part of my shirt that's not going to have the yellow from the Dyer's Chamomile but simply the hollyhock and then hopefully I'll have a line in between where it's a over dye. So in order to do that I'm actually going to fold the shirt up and pin it so that I am only dyeing the middle part, if that makes sense. So I'll just pin here to kind of help this section stay out of the dye. We'll see if that works. Okay, so I have to say, I'm surprised at how vivid it is so fast. I did add a little bit of the dried chamomile that I had, the non-dyers chamomile, because I didn't think it was strong enough, and now I think it's definitely strong enough. I am not gonna let it sit very long. I was not looking for a vivid yellow, I was looking for a little bit more subdued. Of course, it will rinse and dry differently so i'm actually going to pull it out now it's only been in for less than 10 minutes and i'm going to go ahead and rinse it let it dry almost to dry and while that's happening i'm going to be working on brewing up the black hollyhock and gosh i don't think it's going to take that much at all to get this shirt dyed very potent <laughs> I try to weigh these, but they are just so light. I just threw what I felt was like a decent volume and look at the color that's just coming from sitting. I think I'll let them sit for a little while, just in cold water, reconstitute, 
the whole bag is 30 grams so I know that this can't be more than probably five grams or so not a lot of volume but again I'm not too terribly worried since I'm dying just a very small portion of the shirt Right there is the black hollyhock ready to go. I've strained out the bits and I've heated it up. I am going to pour it into that plastic container again. It was a really nice size for me to be able to dip the shirt itself. I felt like I had a little bit more control and I didn't have to worry about the heat of the stove itself. Obviously you want to be putting this into a heated dye in order to help with that uptake into the fiber itself. The shirt is still a bit damp from the previous dip that I did and prep for the Dyer's Chamomile. It is bright, brighter than I wanted. So just make a note that Dyer's Chamomile is strong. You want a vivid yellow, it's a great place to go to. And I should have known that based upon the skein of wool that I got in my CSA box because that was quite yellow. I'm going to dip the shirt now up and over part of that yellow to get a crossover so that we can see what the color will be of an overlay and then that bottom portion that wasn't dyed will be just black hollyhock. Now you notice when I poured out the hollyhock, and we saw this in the video with the skein of wool, the color of the dye is more of a purplish color, but that doesn't typically translate or maybe ever translate onto the fiber. So we should see that shift happening when we introduce the fiber, but let's see. Who knows? I did one time with a cold soak get a more purplish color from black hollyhock or pink hollyhock. So I still think it's gonna shift and hoping so. If not, if it stays a purple, that's okay. Purple and yellow, they're opposites on the color wheel. They go well together. Otherwise, I'm thinking it's gonna turn into that more steel blue green and should have a nice vivid green as a middle stripe. Let's try it out. It's literally been in there about, I don't know, two minutes maybe. And look at that. Already happening what I was hoping, getting really beautiful sort of greenish color over the yellow. And the color is looking really blue. Oh my gosh. Okay, happiness ensues now. I'm gonna try to even it out, but again, I'm not terribly worried about it, but I can see that I already went a little higher in the back. So it's gonna be like a sunset or a landscape sort of vibe. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna take it out. I really like it like this very short. Let's rinse it and see what happens. So I am pretty impressed with how this turned out. This is the dried Dyer's Chamomile, and this is where it overlaid with the Black Hollyhock. Now when this was wet, it had a 
bluer sort of tint to it now it does have a really beautiful soft blue green and where the two overlap is this really pretty sort of middle green <laughs> Anyway, it looks really nice and I will happily wear it. I have another almost a week left to wear this. I had thought I might have time to change it again, but I don't. So I'm gonna live with it like it is. You can see that the echo print is definitely fading a little bit. This particular leaf looks fantastic. I must have pounded it a little bit harder than these two, but they still look really pretty and I like it. I like the kind of rubbed look. It looks worn and very much a loved shirt. So, yay. Fun stuff. Well, there you have it. I've got myself a beautifully ombre dyed wool top that I can now take with me to wear for the next week while I travel and where I'm heading to is a pretty special place. I will have the shirt there with me so maybe while I'm in that location I may decide to do some more dyeing to the shirt but the challenge ends in less than a week and so I made it. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me on this journey of playing around with dyeing different techniques on a wool shirt. Maybe that'll get you inspired to check out Wool And as an option. They have beautiful, very comfortable clothing. I wish I had purchased a dress to go on my travels, but not this time. Maybe I'll use that $30 gift certificate towards that for next season. Okay, so. I've told you I'm going to be traveling, but next week on Color Quest, I'm going to take you back in time to a trip I made earlier this summer to Colorado. And I did some natural dyeing while I was traveling using mud. So I hope you'll join me as we poke around some of the red dirt of that beautiful state and see what I was able to come up with in a very short amount of time using earth as my natural color. Have a great week and I will see you next Friday. You would know that, oh, I don't like any of that. Okay. All right, so I have the lunch, breakfast, stop that.